the early season league games in Italy are seeded to keep the top clubs apart, but that formative phase is over. The big confrontations are underway and they come no bigger than Napoli against Milan in front of a packed and partisan crowd here in the San Paolo Stadium in Naples. The task for Trevor Francis and myself is to describe for you just how the champions match up against the early season league leaders and how Milan cope with the difficulties of performing in this intimidating stadium. They are a side of class and continuity and with sufficient depth in their squad today to leave Roberto Donadoni on the substitute bench. Part of the reason for that is that Frank Rijkaard is available again after injury and suspension. He starts his first league game of the season. Milan with nine points from their five games so far. They're looking good, though you can't say the same about their opponents today. Referee Carlo Longhi back from London, where he was a linesman at Wembley on Wednesday for the European Championship International between England and Poland. Napoli have made such a nervous start to the defence of their title. They've also had to wait for Diego Maradona's latest jaunt to Argentina to finish. The captain very much a law unto himself, but he's back, he's playing of course. And at least their selection worries have been kept to a minimum, although two experienced defenders are still on the sidelines, Renica and Corradini. Just one win in five matches is a very poor return by Napoli standards. And this really is a vital game for them to win it if they can. If they were to lose, the gap between the two clubs would be an astonishing seven points. Marco Van Basten going in strongly Maybe an early indication here of Milan's sense of purpose. It's their throw. Ivani to take it. Paolo Maldini, who was doubtful during the week, he's been out for a couple of games with injury, and Ivani too was on the treatment table, but they've all come good for a game where they try to test out an old friend, Giovanni Galli. Starting the game well forward, not getting any sympathy from the referee then. Milan have really set a, a new style over the last two or three years under Arrigo Saki in this pressing type of football where they adopt maybe a more of a northern European approach. They mark zonally. They work hard in midfield, they deny the opposition space, and it's worked really brilliantly for them. But it hurt so much when they fell away at the end of the last season when the Italian league title seemed there for the taking at the expense of Napoli. Gaudenzi, one of the newcomers this season, getting in across. And I'm sure Giovanni Galli, aware of the extra spotlight on his performance today and glad to have had a couple of touches of the ball most confidently in the opening two minutes. A combination of Rijkaard and Gaudenzi halting Kripa, who's a muscular midfield player. And he's starting on the left of the Napoli midfield. And Fernando de Napoli, as always, on the right. Who played for Italy in midweek against Hungary and was brought down for the penalty that brought Italy their equaliser on a day when they could easily have been beaten. Here he is, Fernando de Napoli. I'm sure you remember him from the World Cup. who's a pretty tough character and is 
responsible for the distress felt by Alamau at the moment. Well, that's a typical Ancelotti tackle there. He certainly doesn't hold back, and I think that uh, Milan in these early moments have shown their intentions. They've not come here to be intimidated. They've certainly taken the game the opening minutes to Napoli. And uh, I would think that Napoli aren't exactly oozing with confidence, and uh, Milan are going to play on this. Maradona's free kick. Rijkaard helping back in his own penalty area. This is in Cocciati. It's a useful ball in. With Costa Curto was able to just about cope with at the near post. Ancelotti, oh, and he's followed through again. And Carlo Longhi had no hesitation that time. Ancelotti has had a distinguished career in Italy, he's now uh, retired from the international scene but he has been hurt a few times himself, he's had a broken leg and you just sense there's uh, always an air of, well I'll get the, uh, the first blow in about his uh, present day play. Raika. This is Tassotti, well it's made that sort of uh, angle run that Van Basten also uses to his advantage. Ivani jumping with Maradona. Maradona definitely used the head. De Napoli. De Napoli again to Incocciati, who had six seasons with Milan at a time where actually had a spell in the second division. Perezzi against Kareka. And uh, Casali couldn't prevent the corner. Well, it was good defending there from Franco Perezzi, and he's complaining that the ball didn't go out of play, but I think that uh, just went out, and uh, we'll see here probably... Well, we can't see, but I think that uh, the referee was correct on this uh, instance. A corner to be lined up by Maradona. Andrea Pazali, who's been battling against a twisted knee to be fit for this game. Oh, and that's in Cocciati. in the league games for Milan last season while uh, Giovanni Galli was still a Milan player but used in the European Cup ties it's a style of platooning by Arrigo Saki as the Americans would say but Pazzagli who is a couple of years younger than Galli preferred when the position was reviewed at the end of the season and Galli allowed to come here to Naples Ivani who's one of the real unsung heroes of Milan up and down the left hand side but there's uh, that type of frustration to contend with visitors to the San Paolo Stadium usually feel they uh, don't get much that goes their way no, and Arrigo Saki was probably right there. The ball didn't, uh, the whole of the ball didn't go out of play there, and uh, I think on that instance the lineman, linesman wasn't correct. Ancelotti inviting Hullet to chase. Ferrara picking up through Hullet. Here's Tassotti. good in the air and also so well aware of how to time his runs into the penalty area yes there's a little bit of individual scare by Tassotti get the ball onto his left foot and there's a good cross to the back post and the marking by the Napoli uh, defence left a lot to be desired Rijkaard stole in and almost uh, gave Milan the lead great save by Galli oh and uh, maybe Hullet and Van Basten going each other's way then but Giovanni Galli 
one up to him really it was a significant save Thirteen minutes gone, and Napoli so close to going behind, and that really would be a very serious test of their confidence at the moment. Ivani. Well, the inquests are coming from the Napoli bench at the moment. But Francini going outside him. Gaudenzi, who was signed from Verona, he actually played in the Verona side that caused so many problems to Milan in that game at the end of last season. In Cocciati, Maradona improvised to get in a shot that didn't trouble Casali. But there's a lovely open air about this game. Well, we've already seen some great individual skills there. Incocciati, a little back heel to Maradona. I think perhaps he's been a bit optimistic, but it was nice to see a little bit of uh, adventurous uh, play there from Maradona with the, the chip. In from Pullet. The other number 10 expressing himself. There's so many outstanding players on view here today that uh, we can't help but see good individual performances. And already after uh, the opening minutes, you know, we've seen some great uh, individual skills from players and uh, certainly uh, got off to a good start and uh, I'll be surprised if there's not goals in this game. We've had 15 minutes. Milan have scored just seven times in getting nine points from their five games. Their margins of victory have been fairly narrow on the scoreline won by a two-goal margin in fact but they've been pretty conclusive on the pitch Carlo Ancelotti Conceded just five goals in five games, but by having a poor production up front, just four points, and uh, that really represents gross failure by their standards. Van Basten, oh, and can Hollick get there? Oh, he's waited so long for a goal through his uh, injuries that have kept him out of so many vital games. Indeed for an entire season and it looked as though it was going to manifest itself then after Van Basten had carved the way through Maradona screening it from Gaudenzi and Carlo Longhi says to Maradona get up you've been diving and Tassotti didn't make the contact that Maradona tried to give the referee Ancelotti for Milan, there's no surprise in that. Letting the ball do the work this time. Maradona didn't see uh, Gaudenzi approaching him on that side, his right. The feeling is that part of the time Maradona spent recently in Argentina was uh, to discuss what exactly his role should be with the national team. And indeed, how long he should continue playing. I think it's a fairly open secret here that he doesn't particularly want to fulfill his contract with Napoli, which runs until 1993. The club might have other views on that, but Maradona invariably gets his own way. Maradona was interested in going to play in America and the following day already he was interested in an offer from Japan and uh, of course he kept, he keeps being mentioned about him going to Marseille so uh, he won't be exactly uh, short of offers will he? Well 
here is the tall and, and long-haired Andrea Silenzi, and it's Kareka who has clearly picked up an injury or maybe aggravated one that he came into the game with that we weren't aware of, and that really is a disappointment for the home supporters. With only 28 minutes gone, Kareka is off. Silenzi, the top scorer in the second division last season with 23 goals. But he's uh, found it a big step into Serie A. And it's a looping header from Cholet that needed saving. What a difference a goal would make to Ruud uh, Cholet who was written off by so many that his career was over. Re-emerged for the World Cup and has uh, been a regular for Milan this season. Hebani. And Bastard uh, clearly went down through his own fault. who's uh, caught the eye in the opening half an hour with his uh, willingness to uh, run from midfield and his uh, ability to earn free kicks as well. Massimo Kripper just failed to make Italy's 22 for the World Cup Finals. He was very much in contention for a place. And uh, Arigo Saki feels that there's a bit of conning going on here. That was beautifully played, and Ivani wasn't up to it for once. It was a shame for Milan. It'll certainly be interesting to see how many fouls uh, Ancelotti, Ancelotti is going to continue committing because uh, I just counted since he was actually booked there's been four fouls that he's uh, conceded just can't go on like this I'm sure that uh, the referee will be keeping an eye on this and uh, it'll be interesting just to see how many he does allow him to commit before he decides that uh, it warrants a sending off Mauro Tassotti in his 11th season uh, with Milan. Devani, and the pressing done by uh, Napoli then, taking a leaf out of the Milan book. Maradona, options on either side, but still he goes. Alamal, and they're surely not going to get a penalty for that. But Milan were concerned as that uh, South American combination came out the then. And that was much more authentic from Maradona. Well, Carlo Longhi taking exception to something, presumably, that De Napoli said in the appeal that came after this incident. Well, it has to be said, it's probably uh, Napoli's uh, only chance and uh, therefore their best chance. Uh, the ball fell to Alameo and uh, I felt that the space was on the outside of Costa Corta and he turned back inside to him and lost his opportunity there of shooting. Clearly not a penalty. A half that started with a lot of verve and... Uh, the potential of goals, but things tightened up as the uh, game progressed. But Arrigo Saki's team came closest, really. Frank Rijkaard back in the picture again after suspension and injury with a very solid header and a save that Giovanni Galli, the former Milan goalkeeper, will treasure in keeping it at Napoli nil, Milan nil at half time. <laughs> Thank you.
Tonight, two dramas by Krzysztof Kaszlowski, considered to be one of the most challenging and intelligent directors working in Europe today. The Ten Commandments, tonight at 8.30, SPS. SPS Marketing presents The Face of Italy, a wonderful introduction of the sights and sounds of the 12 Italian cities that played host to the 1990 World Cup. This two-hour video guide gives a fascinating insight into the cultural riches and the cosmopolitan chic of Italy's cities and its people. The Face of Italy is available for $29.99 plus $3 postage from SPS Marketing on 02 964 2888 or through your local video retailer. Shingen, Japan's greatest samurai, begins on Wednesday. Father and son are slowly torn apart. <laughs> The heartless actions of a cruel and cunning warlord push a family into lifelong battle. An epic tale of a young warrior's quest for power in medieval Japan. Shingen starts Wednesday at 8.30 on SBS. Welcome back to the San Paolo Stadium. Napoli nil, Milan nil. Napoli have at least shown some of their force in the European Cup so far. They beat the Hungarian champions, Wipesh Doza, 5 nil on aggregate to get through to the second round and the forthcoming tie against Spartak from Moscow. Milan, the holders, got a bye through to the second round stage where they take on Bruges. Clever Francis, uh, the individual nature of the Napoli side up front, summed up by Maradona here. But what did you make of the, the midfield work behind them in the first half? Well, they're fortunate in many respects that they've got such a hard working midfield. I look at players like Ingocciati and Maradona and No Silenzi. Good individual ability, but. Uh, they don't really uh, work hard enough for me for, for the team and uh, they have to rely so much on uh, the midfield boys of Kripa, Alameo and Di Napoli, three players who are working tirelessly, really, to keep Napoli in the game. You might have noticed on the uh, computer here on your screens that uh, Milan were awarded 56% of possession. I say awarded because uh, sometimes in the World Cup the computer seemed to confound the evidence of the naked eye. But I think that uh, would uh, suggest what we've seen here, that Milan have been the more authoritative side. So Marco van Basten and Frank Rijkaard ready to get the second half underway. And Milan, who would be satisfied with the draw, but uh, a win would be wonderful for them because uh, it would really uh, rock Napoli back and uh, I think make the prevalent feeling in this part of the world that the defence of the title was over really at the formative early stage of the season. But one thing you learn about visits to Naples is uh, always expect the unexpected. And who knows what this second half might bring. The, the calm air that Milan have brought to their play might be ruffled. Certainly the supporters will try and play a part in that. And lift the players who uh, look badly in need of an injection of confidence. Certainly they don't look like defending champions. Here's Silenzi though, with a good show of early enterprise in the second half. And uh, he almost got to too much carried away with it. He does look very similar to the uh, way he was brought here to replace Andrea Carnavale. And we won't be seeing much of Carnavale in the near future. Collette. Well, a couple of years ago, that 
might have ended up uh, in the back of the opposition's net. There was uh, plenty of height to the jump. One other factor, of course, that we haven't mentioned is this is an unhappy ground or a ground with an unhappy memory for Donadoni. It was here that he uh, missed the penalty. A crucial one in the shootout against Argentina or had it saved. And uh, possibly uh, there might be some inhibitions in his performance because of that. Collect nothing inhibited there. What a great run and a driven cross that suddenly had uh, Galli well, really torpedoing himself towards the ball. That was a marvellous bit of play there by Van Basten, using his strength, getting to the byline and hitting a wicked cross into the, uh, the centre of the goal. And I would think that Van Basten, uh, well, it certainly took him by surprise because he should have been across the front of that goal where looking to score with a header. Yes, Hollett's cross and Van Basten uh, not really anticipating the venom in it. Rijkaard. Brought out by Maradona. He was fouled by Gaudenzi, but Kripa allowed to go on quite rightly by the referee against Perezzi. Well, he's got a big heart, as well as those strong legs, Massimo Kripa. Napoli might be having a nervous time at the start of the season, but uh, he's playing with uh, real character here. <laughs> Still wanted to go in for a tackle. <laughs> Might have got him a, a yellow card if he connected. He's just referring to that play by Hullet. It's certainly given uh, a little bit of confidence. I think I may have said it Van Basten, but uh, not a lot of difference between them, is it? Uh, <laughs> slightly longer hair, Hullet. That's the only difference, I think. And here he is now. Hullet to uh, Ivani. Now Van Basten. <laughs> and Peroni... Well, he made sure that Van Basten wasn't going to trouble him uh, in the immediate future. The referee, again, giving the game every chance to flow, didn't blow for the free kick because Milan was still in possession. But now uh, Baroni gets a yellow card, and I think that's uh, a perfect example for referees, really. He didn't stop the play. Milan uh, wanted to ha have the ball in that position. And uh, then when the game stopped, the culprit was singled out for proper punishment. Really backing up uh, the point, Trevor, you were making about uh, the ponderous nature of Marco Baroni. That was never his ball. first team squad in the Italian first division and some outstanding players on the sidelines Massaro who was in the championship winning side in 1988 he's one of the substitutes today Gaudenzi <laughs> it came a bit high for Hullet but uh, his touch was good, and it's almost as if that cross has lifted his spirits. Maldini. Oh, and Van Basten. That was Maldini again. After Van Basten tried to turn, the ball bounced up. Maldini continued his forward momentum, really. And it was a snapshot and a very good one indeed. Yes, uh, it wasn't a particularly good hold-up play from Van Basten, but... Uh... You see Maldini coming onto it there, great link-up play. It's so uh, encouraging for uh, the forward to see defenders come in in attacking positions like that. And Maldini does love to come forward. I thought at first that he'd actually score with it. He was very, very close to uh, putting Milan ahead. He hit the net, but uh, the wrong side of it. Maldini, here he is again, the son of uh, Cesare Maldini, who's in charge now of uh, Italy's under-21 squad, a former international player. Ivani. Oh, and Hollett! Again, not quite the execution, but what he uh, will be reassuring himself with is the fact that he got into that position. He was first to it. 
and it would have taken a spectacular header to have actually beaten the goalkeeper then. Colette, what sort of cross will we see this time? And he certainly made room for it. Van Basten trying to guide it down. Evani. It was just a case whether Van Basten or Rijkaard would reach it as the Dutchman looked to destroy Napoli here. And in the end, it was an Italian who had the shot, Alberigo Evani. Well, it certainly fell to one of their strongest players there, uh, Ivani, because he's so good from that situation with his left foot. He is predominantly left-footed. But it's once again good uh, build-up play from the two Dutchmen. And at the moment, uh, it looks as if uh, Milan are the most likely team to score. Napoli is certainly hanging on. And here comes Donadoni. Maybe because Saki just wants uh, to ice the cake a little bit more at this uh, situation where it's looking so promising for his team. Donadoni, who's a very serious young man and uh, would have felt the, uh, the pain of uh, his part in that penalty shootout on this ground against Argentina very, very deeply indeed. But he's back at the scene of the accident instead of Gaudenzi. Yes, I would think like us all, Saki's been rather uh, surprised that... Uh, and very, very pleased, I would think, at the uh, the performance of Napoli. And because of that, uh, he's put Donad Donadoni on a little bit earlier than he anticipated. Ripper, Milan a bit slow to react. But they uh, managed to fashion the block. Well, you'd think that Milan, with a home team, the way the game has gone so far... Napoli, of course, have been beaten here this season. They went through their championship season without a defeat on their own ground. But they lost to Cagliari, which is certainly the upset of this new season. Just eased past Pisa with a late goal. 2-1 in their only other home game. Still 0-0 here. Milan making the running. Baresi. Torin saw that coming and made it his. And he's trying to get uh, Silencio away down the right. Van Basten dropping deep. Pulitz ahead of him. Rijkaard behind him. But uh, Kripper in again able to win the ball back for his side, if a bit unwittingly that time. Maradona at least uh, draws plenty of opponents to him and uh, the space is there for Alamal. Maradona's in the centre and uh, in the end it floated on past Pazali, past that post. Just when you are about to write Napoli off. Well, Alamal knocks the ball there to the back post looking for a colleague coming in but there's no one there and... Uh, I thought that uh, the way Maradona suggested that the ball might have actually uh, touched the upright, but I think as we saw there, it just went past. That's the closest I would think the Napoli have been to scoring. Here's uh, Tassotti with the cross. Mind you, it won't be a very quiet week here with the uh, European Cup second round coming up, but they won't want to go into that to follow your drift, Trevor, with a defeat. But it might be a win they're thinking of here. really given the chance then Galli will <laughs> be upset first of all that his team haven't taken the lead but goalkeeper to goalkeeper he might have a word with Patalier after the game about this it was an open goal from a relatively awkward angle but you are talking about top class talent and it actually seemed to clip the outside of the post before hitting the outside of the netting so here comes Masaro, the second uh, substitute for Rico Saki. And uh, Raikado, of course, is short of matches at this level. Comes off with uh, 20 minutes to go. What a chance, Trevor. Yes, despite uh, Milan being so much on top, you know, there's no substitute for class. 
And we saw two uh, bits of brilliant play there from the South Americans. First of all, from Maradona with a terrific pass. And then Alamayo with a great run. Having gone around Pazzali, he really should have scored. But it was marvellous play from the two foreign players for uh, Napoli. It's put some new heart back into the home side. Certainly the supporters who are starting to reflect the rather downcast air on the pitch. Alamau again. came hurtling out and certainly made up Alamau's mind for him and the match goes on against a rather unsavoury backdrop Van Basten oh and Massaro the goalkeeper stayed on his line and there was cover for Napoli when they most needed it. It looked when Massaro first touched the ball that Galli would be able to come and take it from him, but he didn't uh, reckon his chances. And now Silenzi brings down Donadoni. Well, it was a great chance for Massaro. He, uh, he gets into a good position, and uh, instead of like blasting the ball, he's tried to side foot it across and not really picked out a colleague. I think if I'd been in that position, I'd have blasted the ball as hard as I could at goal. Donadoni takes the free kick. Hullitz reaches it. Ooh, and... Uh, Baroni, on the ground, was tugging away at Van Basten's foot then, it seemed. The referee at the ball was uh, away from the uh, immediate incident. And the referee seems to be looking at the ball, but Van Basten is furious, and I think he got a case. Maldini's header, collected by De Napoli. Cripper's coming in. Oh, was he pushed down there? He was, so unnecessarily. And the player who really has typified the sort of effort that Napoli have needed, Massimo Cripper. Well, they haven't got the goal, but they feel they're so close to it as Milan have conceded a penalty. Needlessly, Trevor. My first thoughts were that uh, Kripper all afternoon has been diving. I can't remember the number of times he's fallen on the floor. My first thoughts were he's done it once again. I can't believe that Tassotti is stupid enough in the penalty box to have pushed him over. And judging by the reaction of the Mil Milan players, it's certainly in agreement with me. There are eight minutes to go. There's a yellow card for Baresi for leading the protest. Kripper certainly got into a position there where he caught Tassotti out. And what followed might stimulate a Napoli revival after their dreadful start to the season. And if you had to pick one player in the world to take a penalty for you in these circumstances, while well, you're looking at him. Baresi would be foolish to get involved again. But uh, Maradona has to deal with the delay. It's a crucial penalty. And it's a goal. Bedlam in the San Paolo Stadium. And considerable relief, but Saki's emotions very much the opposite. Well, how on earth do you take them like this when there's so much resting on it? He's just tapped it into the net. Well, they say that uh, we should never miss a penalty, but uh, when there's 75,000 people expecting, it's not easy. The pressure was certainly on Maradona. 
and he takes it it's like it's like as if it's taking a cup of coffee for him so easy he watches the goalkeeper and then decides to put it in the bottom corner that was a terrific penalty under extreme pressure and uh, Pazzelli went the right way but was still thrown off balance and couldn't react and Milan who have been and now appeal for something for themselves and after what happened in Verona at the back end of last season they would be well advised to be cautious and Saki is he walking away from it in disgust I think he's had enough he's walking off It's a match that's been simmering throughout and it's provided an explosive finish. Bigon says, come on. Well, we saw him set from the bench in Verona. It really was the start of uh, a period of mayhem. But there was uh, a penalty appeal here that went against Milan and uh, Arrigo Saki felt that for a few seconds he couldn't take anymore he's had second thoughts Masaro Carlo Longhi was uh, very much on the spot to point to the spot and how badly big on steam needed victory if that's what it's to be Donadoni oh and Galli just has to pour it behind well Milan have got plenty of players capable of attacking the corner in the air Van Basten is one of them Hollett 1-1 one, one. a goal to savour in every sense for Ruud Hollett it's not the stuffing out of Galli and Alamao and Napoli, but it's certainly uh, a goal that's full of justice, really. And Napoli couldn't cope with the aerial threat because the first header here was decisive from Marco van Basten. Well, it was on the move, certainly not flat-footed. A great moment for him. Yes, yeah, so and they certainly have to thank the two Dutchmen there. A great header from van Basten. Hullet gets away from his marker, Ferrara, and tucks it away without any problems. That's his first goal of the season, and what a great time it's come for his team. Arrigo Saki is glad he stayed. And Ruud Hullet, not only his first goal of the season, but his first goal since March 1989 because of the injury problems. And a very, very timely one indeed. And what a change in the atmosphere in the stadium. And we're into the final seconds. Well, during the first half, we talked about the decline, possibly, of the two number 10s. When you look at who scored the goals here, they're certainly very much still in business. And Milan, I'm sure now, having felt that they were potential winners until the penalty was awarded, may well settle for what they've got. Just mentioned how quiet the stadium is. Uh, I was there during the summer when uh, Italy were knocked out of the World Cup against Argentina, and it was a similar sort of day. Van Basten pulled back by Veroni again. He can't really live with it. And uh, Veroni foolishly getting involved in a war of words now. And here's a free kick. And maybe Milan, having said they weren't looking for more, they've certainly got an opportunity now to uh, turn this game around in the most sensational style. Donadoni. That's Tassotti. It could have bounced anywhere. Rizzardi, who was brought on to try and shore up the win. We've had a minute of time added on by Carlo Longhi.
Here comes Hullet again. Van Basten to the right. Massaro anxious to be involved as well. Donadoni's in there. It's Massaro's shot and Galli's work not over yet. Well, I said at the outset that the real matches were starting now after the early season fixtures which were seeded to some extent to avoid these big confrontations in the first month or so of the new campaign. Well, I, I think you'll agree with the point that I was trying to make. It's been very much the real thing here. And a match that was always full of potential had a thrilling finale with the contentious penalty that seemed to have given Napoli a chance to turn their season totally around, dispatched effortlessly by Diego Maradona under intense pressure, only for Milan to show the pedigree that we know, of course, that they possess and that has been illustrated in their early season form. Certainly league leaders uh, of some validity, and Ruud Gullit, of all people, getting his name back on the scorer's list after a long absence. It's Napoli 1, Milan 1. Our roundup starts in Milan against Pisa. Inter weren't helped by the unavailability of Walter Zenga left sitting in the stand. But it was a match which made amazing viewing for Josef Venglosch, the coach of Aston Villa, Inter's forthcoming UEFA Cup opponents. Aldo Serena for Inter, after only four minutes, his first goal of the season. Lota Mateus in masterful form, creating Inter's second for Giuseppe Bergami. And when, after 43 minutes, Andy Bremer played to Serena's strength in the air, the game seemed over. But three minutes into the second half, Pisa exploited Zenga's absence. Giovanelli exposing his understudy, Malgioglio. Another good spell for Inter now, Serena on a hat-trick and almost achieving it. And then Jurgen Klinsmann got in on the act, act really is the right word, a challenge by Calori met by a theatrical Klinsmann ball. Mateus with the penalty. 4-1 down, but not downhearted, Pisa still pressed. Giovanelli wasteful after Battistini's error. And then a stroke of luck for Pisa, still 29 minutes left to play, and Padovano's shot hitting Bergami, Malgioglio left groping, 4-2. Two minutes later, 4-3, Piovanelli with a terrific strike, his fifth goal of the season. But Inter ended the recovery then and there, Mateus reimposing their mastery. And five minutes from the end, Serena did seal his hat-trick after five blank league games, the perfect way to start scoring again. Sampdoria started the day level on points with Inter and with an unbeaten record to preserve Atalanta's Bordin challenging that. But it started to go more smoothly for Sampdoria when Roberto Mancini's free kick flicked in off De Patri for an own goal. 26 minutes gone. Atalanta coming to Genoa in fifth place and Nicolini embarrassing Pellegrini here. The outcome, the simplest of goals for Evair, his fourth in six matches. 1-1, only two minutes before half-time, but Sampdoria still went in, in front. Mancini involved inevitably, but the goal struck with great power by Branca. Branca wearing the shirt still vacated by the injured Viali. Into the second half, Mikhailichenko on target, but well stopped by Ferron. Atalanta almost equalising through Bonacina. But 18 minutes from time, any Sampdoria doubts were swept away. First of all, Lombardo working back to win the ball. Then a superb pass from Mikhailichenko. And Branca again with a very confident finish. 3-1 to Sampdoria. Great entertainment from them once more, particularly from Mancini, who had to wait until four minutes from time for his own reward. Then a contentious penalty. Mancini himself going down, Monti the unlucky defender and offender. Mancini made the most of the award, Sampdoria 4, Atalanta 1.
Fiorentina conceded six goals in their first three games, then scored seven in their next two. But this unpredictable team fell foul of Parma's Alessandro Melli, who's adjusted so well to his first season in the first division. This a fabulous goal from Melli after 17 minutes. And three minutes later, he was at it again, put through by a clever header from Ozio. Two goals up, promoted Palmer, well-placed to extend an unbeaten run to five games. Fiorentina, not quite functioning fluently, though Lakatouche, just a whisker away, set up by Kubik. But for Palmer, near perfection. Watch this. Thomas Brolin, the 20-year-old Swedish striker with a sensational solo run, Fiorentina finding themselves three goals adrift, all of them memorable. A penalty put them back in the picture. Look for a push on Lakatush, Donati the culprit. Lubos Kubik stepping up for the third game in a row, and clearly with plenty of practice behind him, too much for Taparel. Fiorentina fighting hard in the second half. Diego Fuser wearing the number 10 left behind by Roberto Baggio and very nearly producing a Baggio-style goal. Meli could have eased Palmer's anxieties and helped himself to a hat-trick in the process. Landucci keeping Fiorentina alive and 17 minutes from time, they scored again. Kubik's free kick, substitute Renato Busso angling in the header. But that was as far as the recovery went. A splendid win for Parma. Roma thrashed Fiorentina 4-0 on the opening day of the season, but since then they've dropped into the bottom half of the table and now without Carnevale and Peruzzi suspended for a year. Lecce in yellow held them until half-time. Roma should have been leading, though Di Mauro not making the most of Rudy Bola's perfect cross. Bola himself left frustrated in the opening moments of the second half. Zunico in the Lecce goal distinguished himself with saves from Stefano Desideri and then from Thomas Berthold. But no luck for the goalkeeper here, diving out as Bola centred. The ball sent flashing back past him by Salsano. The breakthrough after 54 minutes. Even so, Pasculi could have pegged it back straight away. But then a foolish charge off his line by Zunico, allowing Rizzitelli to loop in the goal, which made sure of Roma's victory. Lecce leaving their goalkeeper exposed again, and this time it was Vola who accurately exploited the opening. Roma with their expected win with plenty to spare. Bari and Genoa with only one victory each so far this season. All the key moments here in the second half. Radu Choyu, the Romanian, picking out Maialaro to set Bari on their way. Genoa's response to bring on a striker, Pacione, for a defender, Colavati. But with Lossetto almost putting through his own goal, the gamble failed. 16 minutes from the end, a penalty which didn't please Genoa after Radu Choyu had run through a depleted defence. Jean Paolo for Bari, 2-0. Genoa realised it wasn't their day when Scuravi's fine header was cleared off the line, and worse to come for them, Jean Paolo calmly collecting his second of the game, his fifth in all. Genoa gasping in disbelief when Caricola struck the Bari bar, and again when in the last minute Maialaro galloped through to increase Bari's margin of victory to proportions which look so unlikely at half-time. A local derby in Bologna, the home side bottom of the table, Cesena only two points better off, but they might have taken the lead through Amarildo. Bologna pinning a lot of faith in Herbert Vass, their West German striker in the continued absence of Deitari. Vass shouldered the responsibility well. But then they lost after only 11 minutes Cabrini, whose experience is so valuable. Bologna badly needing a break in front of goal. 
And no luck for them here with Vass diving in at the far post and hitting that post. In the second half, Vass again to the fore. Bologna had lost four of their five games before this one. The need for victory was urgent. Tricella's ball into the area, well met by Verga, but still nil-nil. It stayed that way until midway through the second half. Piracini crossing for Cesena and Ciocci able to head in a precious goal. Bologna left dispirited and now desperate. Ciocci full of celebration. Galvani's penetrating pass. Di Gia couldn't quite do the trick for Bologna. And more misery for them. Six minutes from the end, Jozic, the Yugoslav World Cup player, in behind Tricella, hauled back. These days, the red card is automatic for that. Bologna's plight was emphasized by their goalkeeper, Cuisin, coming upfield for this corner, beaten to it by his opposite number, Fontana. Cesena climbing the table, Bologna rooted to the bottom. Cagliari at home to Torino without Enzo Francescoli. Good work here, though, by another Uruguayan, Fonseca. Pulga first to the loose ball and left feeling very hard done by. But a better fate for Nardini, his shot deflecting off Luca Fusi. And Cagliari, a goal to the good after half an hour. Martin Vasquez trying his luck here for Torino, trying to stimulate the visiting side. And they got quite a turnaround in the second half from Scorro's cross. Real persistence by Bresciani, rewarded by a goal Cagliari will feel they should have stopped. And suddenly it's 2-1 to Torino from Romano. Martin Vasquez almost grabbing another. Three wins out of the last four for Torino. Staying with the city of Turin, Juventus at home to Lazio, coached now by Dino Zoff, who received a special welcome at the club he left in the summer after splendid service as a player and coach. Zoff would have been proud of this save made by his young goalkeeper, Fiori, from Roberto Baggio. But Fiori was much more fortunate here. Marocchi, the hub of this attack, his header, Fiori fumbling, but he got away with it. Here, he needed the frame of his goal to prevent Thomas Hessler sending Juventus in front. For Lazio, an encouraging moment from Domini's free kick. Still nil-nil, and in the second half, Ruben Sosa from Galia's mistake could have made it a very happy return for Zoll. Julio Cesar did hit the outside of the Lazio netting. But defenders like Julio Cesar neglecting Karl Heinz Riedler. A series here of three Riedler headers, any one of which could have given Lazio the extra point. Juventus fans very disappointed in their team, but many pleased, I'm sure, that Zoff's side didn't lose. Check, first of all, at the bottom half of the table. Bologna, two points, Cagliari, three, Lecce, four, and five clubs on five, including Napoli, who are two minutes away from a win over Milan. Instead, only one victory for the champions so far. Two of the newly promoted clubs, Torino and Parma, have progressed up the table. Juventus down one place, Sampdoria still impressing. But the city of Milan already well embarked on a two-pronged attack on the championship. Inter have cut AC Milan's lead to just one point with that six goals showing against Pisa. Aldo Serena back on song with a hat-trick. But Milan also had a comeback to celebrate and Ruth Hullett certainly picked the right moment to start scoring again.